all you know, Salesforce list view. And I always say, you know, if you're a CEO or a VP of sales or whatever, and this is how you're starting the month and you're about to review the pipeline, you've got a long day ahead of you, right? Because if you drill into these, uh, there's really nothing that is helping you. There's nothing driving you where you should start. You can kind of do some initial sorting, but it, it's a tough haul to, to get a full picture of all this opportunities. Fast forward that to why we built Action Grid uh, to, to solve the struggle of the Salesforce list view and related lists. We can replace that experience uh, within just a few clicks of the mouse, and all of a sudden you have this experience. Now, uh, right away, you can kind of see something that strikes your eye, a conditional color. Uh, if you look at most spreadsheets, you'll see they have some usage of color. Color's driving behavior. You know, we all know what to do when we get to a stoplight. Uh, you know, when we see red, we think something's there. We don't all want to know what to do with the yellow, but uh, at least your eye is being drawn to something's going on here with the green, yellow, red, whatever. Um, and in this case, you know, somebody's uh, written a conditional formatting rule, which is my arch enemy uh, as, a, as a CEO when, when Action Grid was my company, uh, which is the sales guy who thinks he can close a deal in the past, you know, doesn't keep the data up to date. You know, user adoption is, is about keeping that data up to date, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So, you know, you can't blame the sales guy uh, because it's so hard. Uh, if you count the clicks, it's actually seven clicks. Uh, to get into each opportunity, edit it, update it, save it, back, back, back to get back to the screen. And don't forget to pray that you remember where you were um, in the list. With Action Grid, our grids are fully editable, add in place grids. Um, our attention is being called to this dirty data here. And it's as easy as clicking into the box like so. Now, what would you do in Excel? You know, you, you certainly could do one at a time like that, but you wouldn't do that in Excel. You would lasso that data, you know, even those little trivial things like checking boxes, that's so old school. We're not going to be doing any of that. So what would you do in Excel? You'd use that fill down command. So we've emulated that same thing here in the action menu where you fill down, you take your cell that you had edited and you fill it down. That's a poor man's mass update. You'll notice the little red carrot that indicates that the, the data has been edited. I like this method because I can save the data or so I'm ready for my next demo here. I'm just going to revert my change so I can kind of do an undo. Um, now, the other thing for a busy sales manager is knowing where to work. And, and this applies to the sales rep as well. But where should I start my effort? Now, this, uh, we've got this data sorted. Notice multi-column sorting. So we normally have this data sorted by close dates. You can see them all clustered together. But we can also right-click here, and we can change the order here, as well as some other features that we don't have time for. But you'll notice we're, we're doing multi multi-column sorting, which is novel to Salesforce. Um, now, the other thing a sales manager might want to do is group and uh, display that. Use, use Action Grid as a reporting tool. So I'm just going to grab this close date, and I'm going to drag it right into this area that says drag a column header and drop it here. You know, really intuitive to group my data. Now I've got a nice little report, and I can see what's going on in each month. If I wanted to expand that, I can group by the owner as well. And now we can see what's going on in May. And we've got Ryan and Shelly and Steve going on here. You'll notice Action Grid is always subtotaling. No work to do. When we see money, we know what the most fun thing to do in the world is to count money. So we might as well just do it for you. Uh, so no work to do that. If you change your mind and you want to change that grouping around, just slide that over and now focus on the rep. And you say, hey, Ryan, okay, I see what your pipeline is. So super easy to do that. Um, now, lastly, on the reporting kind of aspects or the tools that can help that busy sales manager, maybe he's really only wanting to look at certain uh, stages or, or whatever. And our intuitive Excel-like filtering, so we're throwing all of these sort of standard Salesforce things out the window because our premise 
is Excel is the, the gold standard of usability. And so we've even implemented that kind of checkbox filtering. And I won't demo that. You can kind of see, you can just check the boxes, rerun your filter. So no extra screens, none of that kind of uh, thing. We throw that all out the window. Uh, but it gets better because, you know, what is the guy, what does the manager have to do? He really needs to go into those opportunities to see what's going on. All right. So what are the activities that are going on? Why haven't we been calling this particular guy? You know, if we're trying to close a deal, I'm pretty sure if we don't call, we don't close deals. All right. So this is where we show this novel concept of the reading pane, the action grid reading pane. And you can, if you're a Microsoft Outlook user, you can kind of imagine where we get this idea from is saying, well, what if I could contextually look at the data here? I'm on this Denver Broncos row and notice the screen on the right, the reading pane is showing my related lists. I can see and inspect the tasks that are going on uh, right from that list. So I can even read those notes. So here you see um, a reading pane within a reading pane, but I'm taking a quick spin through those emails and there's the emails down here. I've, for real estate purposes, I've put the reading pane down below, but I can just take a quick spin and see what's going on. And then I can coach that sales rep uh, about what I think is going on. Now we're going to do some coaching. All right. With these sales guys, because you know what, this is kind of making me mad. Um, these red, you know, this is a sales guy. You know, if you work for me and you get the email that says, Hey, uh, Hey Ryan, I see a lot of red in your queue. Believe me, you do not want to get that email from me. Um, but I'm going to do some action on this because I'm a efficient sales manager. I've got my handy action grid going on here. I'm going to just, I, I'm not going to send individual emails. I, I just want to take care of all these people on this list that are in the red. And I'm going to do either a batch ad chatter. If you're a chatter user, you can uh, chatter and say, hey, people get on it. You know, if you don't call, you don't close deals. But instead, I'm going to do on this one, I'm just going to do a task. Uh, so, so show you how to do batch adding up tasks. Now, generically, notice the owners of these opportunities are different people. So I'm going to actually choose to assign the task to these different folks. And I'll set that for tomorrow. And then I'll uh, make it a call. And I'll say, you know, get on it. Close this deal. Or at least make a call. Right. So if we say OK to that, it's going to blast out. It created nine um, tasks. You can see I had nine rows selected down there, nine rows. I'm going to say no to that because we've got our handy dandy action grid. So we can see that the task got created. There it is. Get on it. Close the deal. And if I move on to the next one, you just believe me, they're all there. So that's one aspect of action grid.